Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's all stand together. Like most things in 2020, we had to maneuver some stuff around to get it to work. Like every, every single holiday so far since, was it February, March? But I'm glad to see everyone here. Just like we were to be doing outside, the whole theme of this, this, this service was to just be worshiping our Lord and Savior. So just like we'd be doing outside, same thing, let's do it in here. Raise our voices loud, saying that God's close out the, the year right. But let me pray, open in prayer, and we'll, we'll get going. Lord, we thank you for uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity just to be here. Lord, this has been quite a different year from when we met for Christmas 2019. So, Lord, I pray that now we'll be able to settle our hearts before you. Lord, we're here for your adoration. We're here for your spirit, your love. Lord, may we just have hearts willing to hear all you have to say. Praise all in your name. Amen. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed.
guys may be seated. Rejoice, rejoice. 
time now Lord, to think of all you've done. Lord, dying on the cross for us, paying our debts. Lord, you are the free gift of life. So Lord, we just love you. May we have ears willing to hear all you want to share to us tonight. I pray this all in your name. Amen. Evening, everybody. Evening. We were supposed to be outside. Is it raining? Yes. Is it? Yes. All right, good. That's, this has been an agonizing year trying to figure out if we're inside, outside, upside down, whatever it is. Merry Christmas. Christmas. We weren't sure if there'd be five of us or what. We got our what. We're surprised. I'm going to be reading from the Gospels this evening. I'll be in Luke. I'll also be reading from Matthew. You're welcome just simply to listen. You can read these again at home. It's something we usually do each Christmas morning. We read with our family. Just give me a minute and I'll get myself put together. Father, we come before you and we thank you that we can freely gather. It has been a very strange year. We think of the 300 plus thousand people who have died within our country, Lord, those families directly connected to them, that Christmas is different. 
We think of those, Lord, within the congregation, even this last week, who've lost some loved ones, Lord. That empty space. I thank you, Lord, if we have received your son by faith, we have the hope that there is a life to come. That to be absent from our bodies as believers in Jesus is to be present with the Lord. And these things were all made possible because in the fullness of time you sent forth your son made of a woman, made like unto sinful flesh, yet he himself without sin, so he could pay for each of us. And so we gather here, Lord, Christmas Eve, to thank you. And to remember, Lord, you have gifted us the opportunity to be forgiven no matter what we've done, to be right with you, and to finally experience peace and joy, and most importantly, Lord, in our soul, satisfaction that comes from God. So please bless this time as we remember what you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, if you want to follow along, it says, And in the sixth month, there's more to the story, but you can read that at home. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was? Let's make sure you're all listening. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Note this. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Many prophecies laced in this. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. If you've read Daniel, this is the rock cut without human hands that will come. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. I'll be reading now from Matthew chapter 1. It tells us in chapter 1, verse 18, following this thread along, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by, or of the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, some 760 or so years before it happened. A virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and he knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now we pick up in Luke chapter 2, if you're still with me. It came to pass, chapter 2, verse 1, in Luke's gospel, in those days, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. If you know history, his name is Octavian. He and a guy named Mark Antony defeated Brutus and Cassius, who were responsible for assassinating Julius Caesar. History, man, it's got some good stuff. 
he would become Augustus, Caesar. It came to pass that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus about 4 BC that the world, all the world, should be taxed. And this taxing, verse 2, was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. How many noticed the little link on the website about Bethlehem we put up? Oh, coming out of a solid ministry in Israel, they have actually looked at as they get more history. It's amazing when Jews become believers in Christ because they take all the tradition they have and they begin to dig into the Gospels and it becomes quite rich. So on the main page, I believe it's there, Stephen, is it on the main page? We'll find out, but on the main page is an amazing or just very interesting detail about where in Bethlehem, who are these shepherds, what does it mean, but I won't spoil it. You have to go look at it. It's about seven minutes long. It's worth it. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And so verse 8, Luke 2, and there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Messiah, or Christ, the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now, if you're still with me, back to Matthew 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east prophesied almost 1,500 years before Jesus was born. We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah, the Christ, should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet 700 years before it happened. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And so then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. We have an interesting alignment of Saturn and Jupiter, I believe. Too bad we've had clouds. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Not sure if this is the same star, but interestingly enough, we have it now in our heavens. The star which they saw in the east, verse 9, lo, it came and it went till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, 
and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So what are you telling us, Pastor? Well, I'll be happy to tell you. Isaiah, almost 800 years before these things happened, said it this way in chapter 9. He said, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And that government that he will establish will come in the last days when Israel's back in the land, when knowledge greatly increases, when people travel to and fro, and last year 1.5 billion people traveled, more than the world's population at the time that prophecy was made. When there's a desire for peace in the Middle East, when there are strange famines, which we have with locusts throughout South Africa and throughout Africa, and also even into Argentina and into, uh, into Italy, of all things, from locusts, pestilences, why is there a row skip between you? Earthquakes in diverse places, including in the last few days, Antarctica, which is unusual. Wars, we have them, rumors of wars. We said we ran a nuclear sub through the Strait of Hormuz out of the water this week to let Iran know we don't want any trouble. Israel sent a nuclear sub through the Suez Canal, exposed so it could be seen this week, to send the same message. At a time when it will be a time of global upheaval, a time where the world desires to have a united government, united currency, a time where there's a falling away within the church, in the time of these things, there will suddenly be the return of Jesus Christ. May I heartfelt honestly tell you, out of all the generations of the church, you are seeing more things coming to pass even within this last year than many generations saw for decades, if not even sometimes even centuries. We are living in very interesting times. The return of Jesus Christ is a promise that he made to us that this same Jesus who ascended from the Mount of Olives will in like manner return. When he returns, he will establish his kingdom, which has been prophesied for hundreds of years. That kingdom will have no end. His rule and his reign will be righteous. And it is for those who have put their trust in him. So unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, which is something our world needs. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We are living in interesting times. Now it's Christmas Eve. Kids, how many of you are excited? Put your hands up. Parents, how many of you are excited? Put your hands up. We're giving gifts to imitate what God has done for us. I won't ask you how many of you have told a lie. Because if you don't raise your hand, you just lied. I won't ask you how many of you have stolen something. I want to ask you how many of you might have used the Lord's name in an improper way as a curse word rather than a blessing. But just from those three, we are blaspheming, thieving liars. All have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. All of us know in our heart of hearts we deserve to be judged. And God would be just in bringing that judgment swiftly. But he loves each of us so much, and as we've been going through the book of Revelation on Sunday morning... The treasure to God in his holy city is not the walls, which are gold, and the streets and other things that are otherworldly to us now in this world, but the souls. And so you need to know this evening, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter how you may have sinned against God or against others, if you're willing to ask for his forgiveness, he is more than willing to forgive your sin, to put you in a right standing with him, and to adopt you as a son or daughter of God. You say, well, I'd love to, but I've got to clean my life up first. No, that's not how it works. You just come as you are, and the Lord will forgive you. And so as you're gathered here, maybe you've been dragged out to church by your family members, and you're thinking, how long is this guy going to go? And where are the kids are going to sing? And, well, it's been a different year. 
Know this, if you were the only one on earth, he would still come and die for you. God created you for a relationship with him. And until you come to that understanding and enter into a relationship with him by faith, you are incomplete. You can try to fill that void with so many things, success, fame, wealth, position, pleasure, whatever it is. But until you come to know him personally, there will always be that void chewing away at you, showing you where you're empty, and you'll try to fill it with anything and everything, and you'll wear yourself out. And so tonight, you have an opportunity to open your heart and truly be filled by God's Spirit and to understand what it means to be satisfied in the love of God. You might say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, I want to take a minute right now before we take communion and everything else we're going to do and attempt to set the building on fire and all that, but... (laughs) Well, 2020 is a different year. Why not just go for it, right? (laughs) Maybe you're here. Maybe you're in a living room. You say, I don't know how to pray. This is our turn. Let's respect the moment. Let's bow our heads. If that's you tonight, the prayer is this simple. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done things you must judge. But I believe you sent your son to pay for my sin and for the whole world's sin. I ask your forgiveness. I pray you would fill my heart. You would give me your Holy Spirit and that my life would change. Fill me with the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We have tonight something unusual. Communion ready to eat. Now this is important, or you're gonna be wearing it. I have not tasted this, so I don't know what we're getting. But there are two tabs to pull. The top tab is clear, should look like that, clear. And that will get you to this bread. How many have gotten to stage step one successfully? How many are into their juice? Be honest. Well, why not make the whole year strange, right? How many are ready? If you're ready, put your bread in the air. For you parents, we're really sorry. (laughs) This is a reminder that his body was broken for us. If you've broken your life with drug use or promiscuity or alcohol, whatever it is, you surrender to Christ, he'll make it whole. He'll heal you. He'll change you from the inside out. But like this bread that we have to bring in, you have to ask again his forgiveness. It's so simple. It is so simple. But for some people, it seems almost impossible for them to humble themselves and say, God, I'm a sinner. As a person who's done quite a few things that are extremely wrong, and if you've been with us a while, you know that. Best day of my life, number one, is when I asked Christ to forgive me. Second best day of my life is when I got married to my wife. And then I had 11 other best days, but I think you guys know why. (laughs) Let's remember the Lord who died for us. And let's pray for a better year in 2021. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you that we can remember your broken body of your son that you sent to take our place. Thank you, Lord, that he loved us enough to endure all these things, to live a perfect life, to go through judgment, to be tested, and to come forth, Lord, pure as gold. Thank you for sending Jesus, who could do for us what we could not do for ourselves, be right with God. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Different? You know you're thinking it. How many would like to get back to matzah? We're going to try and do that in 2021 too. Now, your second order of operation here is to pull the tab of the second layer to try to not wear it upon your person. Now look around the room again. When everybody's kind of ready, put a few fingers up. Everybody's kind of ready. I'm sorry this is so laborious, but you're only dealing with your own germs. Let's worship the Lord. Father, we thank you again. Because as the wonderful hymn says, what can wash away my sin? Church? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. 
Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin according to your law. And you didn't send rams, bulls, or goats, but you yourself took on human flesh without sin so you could redeem everyone. This cup is the reminder of the new covenant, the New Testament that has been made through the blood of God's own Son. We cannot earn it. We cannot buy it. We can only receive it. But having received it, Lord, we can be sons and daughters of God. So we thank you for this shed blood, the reminder. You have told us you will not drink again the fruit of the vine until we drink it with you in your Father's house, in his kingdom. And so even so, Lord Jesus, with all the strange things this year, come quickly. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, Lord Jesus. Let's take communion together. As we get to our final song, because we're going to keep this time real limited when these things are lit. Down the sides, you will find people coming and lighting flames, and then if you would spread that across your row, we'd appreciate it. Please be careful with these things. Everybody got one? Let's stand. A quick reminder this evening, if you are a late gift shopper, in Swaziland, things are tough. Everything we sell goes to the ladies who feed those kids at the care points. The ladies have offered to be here tonight, straight down the hall. It's between you and them, but head down the hall, you will find them there, and you can actually get everything finished and minister to people who serve kids who get one meal a day. Merry Christmas. Let's worship the Lord.
Silent Night before the candles burn out. <laughs> Stay as still as possible. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you Sunday.
2021. Can't get much worse, so we'll see. God bless, guys. Merry Christmas.